Um, so here, I'm going to read the intro here. It says, 110 AD, the Roman Empire is at its height of glory, ruled by the Emperor Optimus Princeps. Trajan. All borders are secured and people can focus their attention again on the Empire's internal matters. Rome. Take your chances and boost your power. With proper tactics, you may outmaneuver your opponents and eventually claim victory. I gotta be honest, y'all. At no point during, at any point during this game, do I feel like this theme comes tr through, other than the name is Trajan and there's a Senate track. So that's about it, all right? So what are you guys looking at first? So here on the main board, you have a victory point track around the outside, around the outside, around the outside. Then essentially what it is, is a grouping of six different kind of mini games or mini confined areas in the game. So we have the military, which is going to be up in this area. We have the, the seaside with this area, and it all corresponds to various symbols out here. We have the construction area here on the board with the hammer symbol. We have the forum, which is this area here. We have the Trajan uh, tiles. All of these will be face up once we get started, but I have some examples set up here with the arc. And then we have the Senate track down here with that symbol. Down, then down below that, depending on the player count, we have the time track, which is going to be the timer for the game. Then off board, we have a deck, and there's going to be a couple of cards out here for a disc, uh, two discard piles. We have the Rome Demands uh, stack right here. We have some plus two tokens, and then to refill, or if Bree is uh, with us tonight, we will refill this area and up here with these various tiles. Inside the mystery bag du jour, we have these tiles up here which are going to be in-game scoring tiles that we may be able to acquire as the game goes along. And then from there we have our own player tableaus. Now the main part of your player tableau is going to be over here and it's this Mancala mechanism and these Mancala bowls along with the various stones or the markers that are in a number of different colors. Then you have your legionnaire or worker pool over here. You have spots for Trajan tiles around the board. We have the arc marker, which is going to signify where the next Trajan tile will actually come. And then down here, we have bonus actions and their markers. We have some wild markers, wild and crazy markers right here. Then we have for the construction tiles, a place for those. Then we have for the Rome Demands markers will go up in here. And finally, over on the right-hand side, we have Senate markers on the right. And all of us are going to start with some number of cards in our hand. It's actually going to be three, but I'll go over that as we go along. So that's pretty much all the components that you guys are going to be looking at. So the goal of the game is to earn the most prestige or victory points. It's a point salad. You're going to score a lot of points during the game. You're going to score some number of points at the end of the game. And whoever has the most points wins. The game is actually going to take place over four quarters. So there we go, right there. A quarter is going to uh, consist of four loops around this track and how we're going to determine how many, how far along this track you actually move is based on the number of markers that you move for every player's action. So for instance, if I were to move these two, I would go one, two, like so. So I moved two markers into those bowls. We then would move that two. Then the next player would go. So Jess, she moves, let's say four, that goes, then Derek moves one, then Christopher moves six, et cetera, et cetera. Around this four times, that will be one quarter of the game. We're going to do that four times. And again, whoever has the most points wins. So let's go ahead and go over a round overview and then we'll break down how the different actions are and then we'll actually get started. On each player's turn, a player has two mandatory actions, one possible action and an optional, but the optional, you're always going to take the action for all intents and purposes. So the mandatory action is you must take all of the markers from one bowl, dropping one off along its way to wherever it stops, and th that is one mandatory action. Mm -hmm. 
The number of markers you move is the second mandatory action to move the marker however many around this that you go. Then the possible action is if you satisfy the requirements for a Trajan tile, you may uh, also take the benefit of what that Trajan tile is. And then the optional action, but again, this is the main core of the game, is wherever you drop off your last marker into a bowl, you actually take the action that you ended on. Mm -hmm. So if I wanted to take this military action, I would drop one of these. Let's say I drop one, two, and we move them out here onto the actual spaces. This way, before we don't get mixed up, wait, which color was it? Was it that one? Was it that one? We do like so. Okay, okay I'm good with that. So I move two. So then in that case, we would then come over here, we move two, we come back, I take this associated action. It does not have a Trajan tie, I don't need to worry about it, I would take the associated action. So that is the main mechanism in this game for actually taking actions. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right? All right. So again, that being the first and essentially second actions, you, how many did you move and take the associated action, all right? So before we go to the board to talk about what the six available main actions are, let's go ahead and talk about these Trajan tiles. I'll talk about how to acquire them later on here. So you'll notice that a Trajan tile has two different markers on the top left and top right hand corner. What that signifies is those are the markers that must be in that pool mm -hmm. when you activate that action to then qualify for that, all right? Mm -hmm. So let's say, for argument's sake, let's say, let's set this up like so. On an early action, maybe I do something like one, two, there, okay, that goes in. I take the military action, okay, we go around the table, mm -hmm. it becomes my turn again. Maybe on my next turn, I say I go one, two, Okay, now I'm going to take the forum action. Mm -hmm. But before I do so, I now have two yellow markers in this bowl, which corresponds with the Trajan tile on there. Mm -hmm. I immediately peg however many victory points that are shown there. So I would peg two points in this case. And then I would get to do whatever the bonus is that's shown on the Trajan tile. Draw a couple of cards, move some workers into, or legionnaires, or move some workers into a construction area, etc., etc. I'll go over the details of what those actually do in a little bit. Just know that once you qualify for it, and it could have been, maybe this was there, but I haven't activated this action yet, mm -hmm. right, from an earlier action. So I go one, two, even though I didn't move a yellow in there, mm -hmm. there still are two yellow in there, so I'm good to go. I can do that. I would peg the two points, I get the special action, then I'm just going to go ahead and set that off to the side to show that I've completed it. Special action before or after? Uh, your, your, follow your heart, but almost always you're going to want to do it before right. if, it signa if it corresponds with the action Actions you're off. actually taking. Okay. Okay? All right, so any questions about the Trajan tiles? Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Easy enough? So now, let's go ahead and talk about what the various actions are out here on the board and I'll rejigger that later on. So the first one we're gonna talk about, we'll go ahead and start at the top. So we're gonna talk about the military actions. The military actions, just to be clear, is the helmet symbol on our board. So whenever you place a, your last marker in there, you're going to be taking that action. You can always have a choice of three different options. The first option is the easiest option, which is, Take one of your legionnaires from your pool up here and move it into the area up there. Easy <coughs> enough, that's one option. That's one of the three available uh, options when you take that action. The second option is you may move your leader to an adjacent area. And you'll notice the green areas, those show adjacency. So when you start out in this area, you could move either to the Alps, you could move to Raetia, uh, there, or Noricum, all right, for your first move. When you move your leader, if there is a tile up here, like so, you immediately claim it, and if there is a space for it on your board for the matching tile, we're going to go ahead and place it on our board. We'll go over these here uh, later on as to what the special abilities are. 
So that's your second option. Your third option is, and let's say I were all the way up here in Britannia, your third option is you can teleport one of your legionnaires up to the region where your leader is or your general. If there are no other legionnaires, meaning the small guys, and we'll lay these down when we actually move them out there. If there are no other legionnaires, you score the full 10 points immediately, okay? However, if let's say Red had already been there and they have a legionnaire there, for every legionnaire that is in that space, it's minus three points from what that is. So instead of 10, I would score seven. So Red would have scored 10, I will score seven in that case. You can only visit uh, with a legionnaire each location once. So in other words, there can only be one of each color in a given region. Got it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So those are the three options. Place a new legionnaire out to here. Move your leader to an adjacent area and take the tile. Or place one of your legionnaires where your leader is and peg the amount of points. Minus three for every color that's already there. Okay. Awesome. All right, that's the military action. Any questions on the military? Okay, cool, moving on. The second action that we're going to talk about then is we'll go ahead and move on down. We will talk about the construction area right here with the hammer, the hammer, which is this area. Just like the military area, you're gonna have a couple of options. Essentially, you have two options. One is, again, take one of your legionnaires, in this case, it would actually be a worker, and place it out here like you see as such, like so. So you can, there's no limit to how many you can have here or in the military area. So placing one out here, that's an action. The second action is placing it out here and claiming one of the tiles out there. Easy enough. So if it's your first turn or your first time taking an action, you can place it on any of the available 20 spaces that you wish. Wow. However, on subsequent turns, let's say on one turn, maybe I did that. Then on my first turn, maybe I go ahead and I choose this one. Or maybe let's say I choose this one for whatever reason. I place my marker on that. Then I go ahead and take that marker and place it over here onto my tableau, onto the matching symbol, as you can see, like so. Okay, I'll come back to this here momentarily. On subsequent actions, when you want to place out here, once you have placed your first, it must be placed orthogonally adjacent mm -hmm. to an existing one of yours. So in other words, you're just gonna make a little path. Okay, easy enough. And they can branch out. So if you started out going this way, you could go that way and branch off. However you wanna do it, it just me must be orthogonally adjacent. It also might mean that if Red has a bunch out here, whatever, and they need to come down here because he's trying to get to this one. You do not skip that location. You just go there and you get nothing for doing so, but it gains you access to maybe a tile <coughs> on a subsequent action that you may want to take. So again, two options, placing guys here or placing guys out here. And if it's after your first one, orthogonally adjacent. However, there's a whole big old chance to now be able to chain some actions, and here's how. When you take these tiles, you Im immediately peg whatever the victory points are shown in the bottom right-hand corner of that. Mm -hmm. So in this case, you would peg three points, easy enough. But if it's your first tile of that given type, and there are five as you can see, you immediately get to carry out a bonus action that is symbolized in the bottom right hand corner. So if I chose this tile, I immediately get to take a military action. And going back to this, military action, placing a guy out here, moving your leader, taking the tile, or placing your legionnaire where your leader is and pegging the points. So you get to kind of piggyback onto your own actions, but only on the first one of each type. So if in a subsequent turn, I were to get a second one of these, I would peg the five points in this case, and these range from two to five points, two, three, four, five, respectively. There's four of each, there's 20 spaces. I would not get the military action in this case because I've already gotten it on a previous turn. Does that make sense? For in-game scoring, there's going to be a set collection if you get three or more of these, three or four of them at the end of the game, okay? Any questions on the construction action? Mm -hmm. 
Mm -mm. All right. So we are now one third of the way through. Now let's go ahead and move on over to the coast and hit the seaport or the coastline. Over here, you actually have four options in which to take your turn. And we're gonna go ahead and put the top two cards out like so, because there's going to be two discard piles. Now, they should be one on each side of the draw deck, but we can't see the other side, so there's the two discard piles, okay? Whenever you take the seaport action, and again, whenever your bowls, the last marker moved into that location there for the seaport, you can choose one of four options. The first option is draw two off the top of the deck. Bring them into your hand, mm -hmm. and there is no hand size limit. So let's say I had these four cards. I would draw the other two, add them to my hand, mm -hmm. and then I have to discard one. It could be one of the ones you drew. It could be something that you had already. Mm -hmm. And you choose which of the two discard piles to put them into. Easy enough, right? Mm -hmm. So that's option number one. Option number two, draw one of the top cards from the discard pile. Just take it into your hand, okay? Option number three is you may choose, if you so desire, to place one or two cards from your hand out into your tableau. So maybe I choose to place those two cards into my tableau. It's one or two, and then you immediately draw off the top of the deck one or two cards, depending on how many you played. Okay. Easy enough, that's option number three. Now, option number four is now where those ship tiles come into play. So you'll notice that there are three different ship tiles worth a varying amount of victory points. Starting with this one. That one says you may play one, two, or three, or four different cards to your tableau, different cards, and score two, four, six, or eight points. So for instance, if I had these four cards in my hand. I could choose to play all four of them if I wish. These will stay in my tableau for in-game scoring, potentially, and I would immediately peg eight points. If I only played three, I would score six, whatever, and then this flips, and now it's a reduced value on the other side. Okay, easy enough. Mm -hmm. The second ship there in the middle is like a single, a two identical, three identical, four identical, etc. <coughs> so if I played, say, three like so, I would then score 12 victory points, immediately scoring that flip that tile. And you can only do one of these, I should point out. And this last one is pairs, but different pairs. So if you were to play a pair of something and a pair of something, that would be worth 10 points like so. Mm -hmm. All right, easy enough? You peg those points, you flip the ship, boom, done. So, four options. Draw two off the top of the deck, discard one to either of the piles. Choose to draw one off the top of either of the discards. Play one or two to your tableau and then draw that many off the top of the deck. Or take one of the ship actions and scoring that. Any questions on the seaport action? Nope. Nope. All right, so there's three of them. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Trajan tiles. How to acquire them? Well, we'll go ahead and flip these even so, even though for setup, there are six different piles, as you can see here. These are all worth nine victory points. So when you qualify for it, boom, you score nine points. This one places one or two legionnaires into the area up here so it's a bonus action for that but it's only placing legionnaires and it will show either one or two that is that entire stack mm -hmm. this stack over here placing one or two workers here easy enough just like the legionnaires but in the construction zone this one is all draw two cards off top of the deck and keep them okay then this one is going to be for a bonus two marker Okay, which I'm going to talk about here in a little bit. Just know that you're going to get one of these and you must choose a location in which to place it. And last but not least, one of Rome Demands tiles. Okay, which again, I will talk about these. Now there are, you know what, now's as good a time as any to go ahead and talk about those. As the game goes along, as you pass go, if you will, every time we hit this arrow, mm -hmm. Remember, a round, can, or I'm sorry, a season, or one quarter of the game, consists of hitting this spot 
four times. Mm -hmm. The first three times in which we hit it, after that player, whether it lands right on it, goes past a couple, depending on how many they move in from their bowls, we're going to take one of these tiles and place it over here. When they're done with their action, we're then going to flip it over dramatically and say, Rome demands cookies. Okay, fine, it's hardtack bread or biscuits. <laughs> I know, but they look like cookies, so we're going with cookies. cookies. Rome demands cookies. Okay, then the second time we come around this space, we're going to flip this over. And we're going to say dramatically, Rome demands... Well, not more cookies. Yep, more, more cookies. Uh, okay. More cookies. Then the third time we come around, we're going to flip a third one. Rome demands helmets, or in this case, military. Okay. Then the fourth time it comes around, that will trigger the end of that quarter of the game. A number of things are going to happen at that point. Mm -hmm. But the one that we're going to talk about right now, and first and foremost, is the demands. So every player is going to owe exactly what Rome demands, okay? They're going to need some mix of tiles out here that are either fire, military, or cookies, as you can see out there. And these are disposable. These are one-time use. Mm -hmm. So that will satiate one of the demands. The other option is these Trajan tiles here. These, however, are permanent and they offset one of them. So if you if one of these was a cookie tile and you got it onto your tableau, if you got that there, it would offset one of the cookie demands permanently for the rest of the game. So even though there are two, this would only sa satiate one of their two demands for cookies because let's face it, cookies are delicious and they want multiple, all right? <laughs> So that's what this is. This stack is going to be. It's going to be an even distribution, but the order in which they're distri distributed, we don't know, between helmets or uh, military, between food and between fire. Okay, or uh, I believe those are um, uh, at the uh, sacrifices. There you go. A sacrifice to one of the deities, I think, is what it is thematically. So it's fire, helmets, or cookies. Easy enough. Okay. Fire helmets, cookies. So that's the Trajan tiles. When you take this action, you choose one of the Trajan tiles. You then will place it out here, wherever your arc is, or your arch, sorry. Place it there, and then this will automatically move to the next empty spot to show where the next one's going to go. Mm -hmm. If ever it, there's no space for it, it will just go into the center, and then as you complete one, it'll then take that spot for whatever one you completed. And as I showed earlier, when you complete it, you either do the action and turn it over, or if there is a space for it up here, it will go up there. You immediately peg the points, and you get whatever the bonus is. Easy enough, right? Very easy. So that is... The Trajan tiles. Any questions on those? No. Mm -mm. So we have military, construction, we have the seaport, and we have the Trajan tiles there. Then now we have the forum. The forum is when you take that action, take a tile. Cool, easy enough. It's, like I said, it's either a disposable demand for whatever it is, if it's a green tile, if it is a Senate tile that's going to count for votes for the end of the round. I'll cover that later. However, if it's one of these bonus action tiles there, what those are correspond to these spaces down here on your board. So if, for instance, I had taken this Trajan tile, I'm sorry, this uh, ar arch mm -hmm. um, Trajan tile, yes, marker, the next time, or any time, that I take this action here. So for instance, if there were two here, I would go one, two, and I'm taking that action to be able to take Trajan tiles. I would take my one normal Trajan tile, like normal. Mm -hmm. Then I would place it wherever my arch, arch is. It would move here easy enough. However, if I have a marker here, I then can take it however many times are shown here. So I can immediately take it a second time if I wish. Okay. So I get to take two Trajan tiles. I would place one there and then it would have moved here. I would have placed it there, easy enough. Okay. However, earlier I had mentioned that you can get the bonus markers. And these bonus markers here allow you to change that plus one to a permanent plus two. 
So once you acquire one of these plus twos, you have to choose where it's going to go and it stays there like luggage forever. But however, whenever I take that action now, I now can take it three times. Three. Okay. However, this is disposable, meaning once you use it, that one's gone. The plus two will stay, but you can't do that bonus times unless you get another tile that says that. And there's no limit to the number of tiles that you can have here. Okay. Just every time you activate it, you spend whatever tile that is. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right. And obviously, it's associated with these. Do you have to, However, you have to spend it? You do not. So when I take this action, like I, I said, maybe I want to wait because I wanted to be able to acquire this for later. So then it's always a may. Hell, you don't even have to take the main action. You probably want to, but it's always a may. Hmm. Also, whenever you take the bonus action, remember the first time you take one of those tiles, mm -hmm. you then can trigger this for the associated action as well. It's a little bit more rare that that happens, but you can do it if you time it. So you can just time, boom, 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 and you chain together a whole bunch of action. That's quite an executive action. It, right, it, seriously, right? Going VTOL on us. Yeah. That totally is. <laughs> so does that make sense now for the forum tiles? Mm -hmm. I didn't talk about the uh, Senate voting. I will here in a little bit. The last action is the Senate track. The Senate track, whenever you take this action, you move up one space. It's not very dramatic, but it is worth points. Every time you go up and you go to that space, you, you move up one space, you get that many points immediately, okay? This is also, it's felled. So it's also going to affect majority for tiebreakers to be able to claim these. And so you just score as many points as you get. If you ever make it up to the very top here, you can't do that anymore this quarter, okay? So those are the six main actions in the game. You pretty much know how to play the game now. Let's just go over a couple more details, all right? At the end of a round, when you go around this, we're going to reveal one of these, okay? And we keep going until we have three. Then when we hit the next spot, you don't automatically stop. You might carry on past it like what you see here or something like that. Mm -hmm. But then at that point, now we're going to pause and we're going to do end of the quarter year scoring or just kind of end of year or end of quarter year stuff. The first thing that's going to happen is everybody must sa satiate the demands of the Roman people. If you can, you must. Okay. So let's go back and let's say I had that and give me a cookie, will you? Thank you. All right. Nom, nom. So Rome demands two cookies and a helmet. Well, we take a look up here. What do I have? I have one helmet, permanent. Mm -hmm. Cool. That's good. That doesn't get discarded. Great. But I have a cookie. I have to discard this cookie because it's one of the edible cookies, mm -hmm. if you will, of right? Course. So I discard that. So that took care of two of the demands of the three. So I satisfied those two. I did not satisfy that one. Ergo, I lose four points. Wow. If I could not meet any two of them, I lose nine points. If I cannot, and I just said to hell with it, I would lose 15 points. Mm -hmm. Losing four, not a big deal. Nine, eh, 15, mm, not good. Not good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing, and all of us must do that. Is that clear? Yep. All right. Then after that, then we're going to determine the Senate. And let's say it were something along the lines a moment, let's say it were like, better yet, let's say it's like that, and there. Let's say the Senate looks something along the lines about right. of this, okay? The current leader votes in the Senate with five votes is me, then Christopher with four, then it would be on top, Jess with three, and then it is uh, uh, Derek with three. But however, any of these tiles down here, the purple ones, also count as votes. They don't count for victory points, but they do count as votes. Right. So in this case, Jess has four additional votes. Four plus three is seven. And if she's the only one that has it, she actually has, she's the consul. She got the most votes. Mm -hmm. So what does that mean? She gets her choice of one of these two in-game tiles. Now I'm going to bring them over here so you guys can see them a little bit clearer. And here, 
you can see that at the end of the game, you're going to score one point for each construction worker that you have on a construction space. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. Or any of these cards that you have face up in your tableau. So for instance, you'll see the diamonds. You get three points for every card that's face up in your tableau, which again, you're doing that through the seaport action. Nice. So Jess would choose one of these. And let's say she chooses this one to then put over here in her tableau. Well, I would then get the second choice because Jess had seven votes, I have five. So I would choose the second one, and by choose, I mean I'm kind of forced to take it, but that's okay. I flip it over to the silver side, which is a reduced cost, so a reduced victory point. It was oh, three points okay. per, now it's two points for per person. for each that, for second place. That's mm -hmm. the... Uh, the uh, uh, consolation prize for being second in the Senate. It's not bad. All right. Then after that, last place goes at the bottom of the track. Then actually she was consul. So it would go there, then there, and then there on top. Okay. Okay. Because she actually had the most votes. Then anything that's left here, we would wipe. These three are the yellow ones, all the others are green ones. Then, any empty space that does not have a piece of wood in it will then immediately refill up there in the military space. But you'll notice that both of these spaces, there's a legionnaire there and there's a general up there, neither of those two spaces would refill at the end of the quarter. Mm. Okay? Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Then, immediately when these are taken, these are flipped back up. Uh, refills are never, uh, discards are never refilled unless they're discarded Minus. by players, mm -hmm. okay? We would then go back into the bag of mystery. We would draw two more to fill this for the next round. And if there were any ships that were flipped over from that side to that side, we would flip them back to their blue side. And that's it. Once we reach the end of the game, meaning we've gone around this 16 times, four quarters there, once we trigger the end of the game, we go through a final here, we go through a final here, etc., etc. Obviously, we don't bother refilling any of these, but then we go into end game scoring, which is every card left in your hand is worth one point. Every worker in here is worth one point. Every worker or legionnaire in here is worth one point. Then, any Trajan tiles that are left on your board that you did not finish are worth, you guessed it, one point. Then, for sets of these, for every three of a kind that you have, you score ten points. Wow. If you get all four of them, they're worth twenty points. Notice, now I want to talk about these wilds right here. This wild token, which these will come out into the forum, okay, which if you look, Derek's actually going to point at it, that tile up there, that one substitutes for one of these for the set collection at the end of the game. So if you had two, you now have three, but they're one time use, so you can't use them for multiple spaces, unless you had multiples. A wild card is exactly what it is. It's a wild card, okay? So whenever you're playing at the seaport action, this one is a wild demand, so you can just discard it for whatever Rome demanded that you're short. And last but not least, even though the shape is wrong on this one, it is a wild action tile. So whenever you take an action, either through those actions or these, oh hey, I'm going to spend this and go ahead and take a bonus action. Unless you have a plus two marker there, then you would but take a bonus two actions mm -hmm. for it. The hex is actually there, it's just lighter. Exactly, right. Um, and then you're going to score any bonus tiles, hmm. and whoever has the most points wins. And that is how you play Trajan, all right? Nice. The Roman general and Roman uh, emperor Trajan. All right, so if we can, if you guys can shuffle up the cards over there, because I had sets set up there. I will randomize my board again. You got it? Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know what? We'll you keep don't get the those first two. Foreign, foreign tiles? Yeah, I would love to. 
-hmm. There's that. Yeah. I get that one out. Go ahead and put it. These are just yourself. randomly placed? Yeah. They are. Okay. Just literally here, I'm just going to scramble mine. Thank you. Okay. Can I have the bread that's down there? Oh, yeah. Probably. That should... Oh. oh which one goes here? Yeah, oh, uh, there should be... Am I missing one? It's not on my board. Uh, yep, sorry. There we go. All right. So here, I'm going to randomize this like so. So there, there, just randomly grabbing and placing. And there. There we go. So this starts here. Move that back. Everybody should have one out there. We do. Let me go and bring the chat up. Any questions?